Hi, I'm Dr. Ralph Sway Watkins, and welcome to the channel, The Soul of an Artist, where we give creative, specifically photographers, teaching, inspiration, and mentorship. And in this video, I want to introduce to you the work of Roy DiCarava. I want to introduce to you, one, his understanding or definition of what he called the black aesthetic. And then secondly, I want to introduce to you five books very quickly that cover the breadth and depth of his work. Why is Roy DiCarava so important? Roy DiCarava, I would argue, is the father of modern African-American photography. And as a photographer, it's important to know that the mothers and fathers of the craft, to know those who came before you, to study their bodies of work. Because as you study their work and you see how they saw, it helps you see it helps you realize you're not taking a new picture, you're only taking the next picture. Roy DeCarava had a show in 1969. The title of that exhibition was Through Black Eyes. Roy DeCarava struggled with trying to define what it meant to have a black aesthetic. But I believe he defines an answer that answers that question um, in his work. Let me show you this brief clip of Roy DeCarava talking about what he calls the black aesthetic. One of the things that black people produce is art. And their concept of the world, which has been shaped by their blackness, makes indications of its existence in art. So, yes, there is a black aesthetic. And I would do all I can to ensure that it survives, because if the black aesthetic doesn't survive, then blacks don't survive. So while Roy DiCarava defines that in that clip, I think it's more so defined by you engaging his work. I think his work epitomizes what he means by a black aesthetic. And we start with his first book, The Sweet Fly Paper of Life, done by Roy DiCarava and Langston Hughes. Roy DeGraw was the first African-American to get a Guggenheim Fellowship. And from that fellowship, he did the work that's included in this book. Photographs that were lying around, he didn't know what to do with them, couldn't get a show. Someone had introduced him to Langston Hughes. He thought Langston Hughes would like the images. He calls Langston Hughes, shows Langston Hughes the images, and this classic work is born. A work that marries word and image that tells the story of our people. And the beauty of this book is, it really is the epitome of DiCarava's work. His intimacy, his closeness, his, his familiarity with the African American community. Some will tell you, you shouldn't do work that's linked to a community that you know. But that goes contrary to who we are as African Americans. It's the beauty of those relationships that inspire our work. It's out of those communities that we create work and those communities created us. Number two, Roy DiCarava. This book is, I think, uh, representative of his work. It's a great book. It, 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 I, mean, I love the book. It's large. The prints are beautifully printed. Well done. And it gives you a breadth of his early work, but it doesn't give you the complete body of work. But it's a good representation, so I recommend this book. But the book I probably love the most is this one. Roy DiCarava, The Sound I Saw. And why is it I like that, that book so much? I like that book, this book, um, so much because in this particular book, what you find is not just his images of great jazz artists, but in The Sound I Saw, you see images of the community side by side, that of musicians. Roy DiCarava was a painter before he was a photographer, and he also played the saxophone. He's a true Renaissance man. He was influenced by Charles White, the painter. So he has a painting sensibility, a, a, music, a, a musical sensibility to his work. But what you find in this particular piece is you see how he saw as he heard. DiCarava says that the greatest thing great photographers have in common is their desire to see. He said if, when asked, if there's one thing you could take a picture of, what would it be? He said the wind. So I know it's an impossibility, but it gives you his sensibility of how he saw, how he felt. And this book, I think, brings that out. 
1996, Roy DiCarava um, uh, had a retrospective of his work done at the modern <laughs> at MoMA in New York. And this book is probably the most fully representative, comprehensive uh, treatment of the work of Roy DiCarava. From his very early work to his late work, it's beautifully printed, well done, hard to find, but if you want to engage his work from the beginning of his journey to the end of his journey on this side of the Jordan, so to speak, you want this book. Because what you see in this work is De Caramba took images of what he saw. He wasn't afraid of dark. He wasn't afraid of noise. He wasn't afraid of camera shake. He wants you to see what he saw and feel what he felt. Someone image is so sharp and so clear and so crystal and so photoshopped. That's not what he sought. He sought the beauty of the moment the familiarity of the community, your ability to touch what he took images of. When you, when you study his work, you'll see images of, of hands and, and body parts and interesting, unique, intimate ways. His work shows the intimacy he had with his community. He was committed to New York City and his work reflects the beauty of that city, especially when it comes to the African-American community while not limiting him and his work to that community. And then finally, the most recent work, uh, Di Caraba, entitled Light Break, um, and his, his widow, who has been instrumental in, in being an advocate for his work during his life and after his life, she leads this project as well. This is a recent book published in 2019, 2018, and it's, it's readily available on Amazon. It's a book you really need to have in your library. The essay alone that, that um, um, Di Caraba's widow writes is so important. Um, it's just, it's, it's so, it's just such a, it's a beautiful book well printed, um, well done. And as I said, the essay um, by Sherry Turner de Carava, it's an essay in all of these books, Sherry Turner de Carava, an historian in her own right, writes about her husband's work, really their work together. And the book is worth that just to read her essay about his work. Roy de Carava, the father of modern African-American photography. You need these works in your library. As a photographer, you need to study the work of the masters. Roy De Carava was a master. He is a must for every photographer to know and engage his work. Listen, if something has been helpful in this video to you, please share with colleagues and friends you think also might benefit and be blessed by it. And, and, and in the comments below, let me know who your favorite photographer is that I might look at his or her work and maybe do a video about that work. Listen, we create content every single week for photographers and creatives that's meant to teach you and inspire you and mentor you. So by all means, please subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when a new video is dropped. Listen, I'm Dr. Ralph Basui Watkins, a scholar with the camera. Thank you for allowing me these few minutes of your time to teach, inspire, and mentor. Now, go out and create something beautiful.